Welcome to a Grace Digital presentation. In this video, we shall be discussing Barabbas and the ransom for his life. While the calls rang out to crucify Jesus from the same people that once sang his Hosanna, and he was put on the stand by Pilate to answer for his supposed crimes, there was a convicted criminal waiting in the shadows about to be called out to face the people also. Matthew 27, 11 through 31. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. When he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, Don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge, to the great amazement of the governor. Now it was the governor's custom at the festival to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time, they had a well-known prisoner whose name was Jesus Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, Which one do you want me to release to you? Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he knew it was out of self-interest that they had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message, Don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus who is called the Messiah? Pilate asked. They all answered, Crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, His blood is on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But he had Jesus flogged, and handed him over to be crucified. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. Then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. After Barabbas was released to live in liberty and Jesus became his substitute, the Bible doesn't mention where he went or whether he returned home or picked up his former occupation as a criminal. But there is one huge lesson from his life to hold dearly. Walking into liberty signifies that he had received a ransom for his soul, and therefore could not be held in captivity anymore. Matthew 20, 20 20-28 Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to Jesus with her sons, and kneeling down, asked a favor of him. What is it you want? he asked. She said, Grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right, and the other at your left in your kingdom. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said to them. Can you drink the cup I am going to drink? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, You will indeed drink from my cup, but to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared by my Father. When the ten heard about this, they were indignant with the two brothers. Jesus called them together and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many, Barabbas' story and his encounter with Jesus simplifies the message of Jesus' redemption. Jesus took our place. Even though Barabbas was the one who was a vile sinner, a breaker of the laws of God and man, 
Yet he did not get the punishment everyone knew, without a shadow of doubt, that he deserved. 1 Timothy 2, 4 through 6. Who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth? For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. This has now been witnessed to at the proper time. Jesus took that punishment on his behalf to signify that his blood and death that would provide the grace that would cover us from the repercussion or consequence of our sinful nature. Romans 4, 24 through 25. But also for us to whom God will credit righteousness, for us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. We must understand and know this truth from scriptures that Jesus didn't just become a ransom for Barabbas that specific day, but much more than that, he became the ransom for the whole world. 1 Peter 2, 16-25 Live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as God's slaves. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honor the emperor. Slaves in reverent fear of God, submit yourselves to your masters, not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. For it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering, because they are conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins, and his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. The concept of finding a ransom to bring liberty to another that is stuck in captivity was also described way back in the Old Testament. Job 33, 19-30 He is chastened also with pain upon his bed and the multitude of his bones with strong pain, so that his life abhorreth bread, and his soul dainty meat. His flesh is consumed away, that it cannot be seen, and his bones that were not seen stick out. Yea, his soul draweth near unto the grave, and his life to the destroyers. If there be a messenger with him, an interpreter, one among a thousand, to show unto man his uprightness, then he is gracious unto him, and saith, Deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. His flesh shall be fresher than a child's. He shall return to the days of his youth. He shall pray unto God, and he will be favorable unto him. And he shall see his face with joy, for he will render unto man his righteousness. He looketh upon men, and if any say, I have sinned, and perverted that which was right, and it profited me not. He will deliver his soul from going into the pit, and his life shall see the light. Lo, all these things worketh God oftentimes with man, to bring back his soul from the pit, to be enlightened with the light of the living. He said to the man in bondage, Go, for I have found a replacement and a ransom. Having a ransom for our sins is such a huge blessing, isn't it? Therefore, we must be grateful and constantly conscious of the fact that the only reason why we are walking around in liberty as free men and women, just like Barabbas did back in those days. The understanding of Christ as our ransom is the reason why Paul, who was formerly called Saul, had great revelation about our new life in Jesus. Acts 8, 1-3 And Saul was consenting unto his death, and at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria. 
except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial, and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house, and hailing men and women committed them to prison. Paul knew that he deserved grave punishment for being a persecutor of Christ's body, but he embraced Jesus as his own ransom so that he could begin a brand new life. Galatians 2, 20-21 I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, in the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. We must never forget or take for granted the fact that Christ gave himself up for you and I. Romans 5, 12-21 Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, and in this way death came to all people, because all sinned, to be sure, sin was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not charged against anyone's account where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did not sin by breaking a command, as did Adam, who is the pattern of the one to come. But the gift is not like the trespass, for if the many died by the trespass of one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to many? Nor can the gift of God be compared with the result of one man's sin. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation, but the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. For if by the trespass of the one man death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? Consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people, so also one righteous act resulted in justification and life for all people. For just as through the disobedience of the one man the many were made sinners, so all through the obedience of the one man that many will be made righteous. The law was brought in so that the trespass might increase, but where sin increased, grace increased all the more, so that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Jesus, I appreciate you so much for taking my place in sin and judgment. Thank you for becoming a ransom and worthy substitute for my empty life, just like you did for Barabbas. I ask precious Holy Spirit for grace to live this life of freedom and liberty from sin in a way that honors God acceptably. Amen.